today we have a very special guest. We are going to be uh, seeing Dr. Radvar. What an amazing guy. This guy has literally changed my life. And uh, we are going to uh, visit him. And uh, it's just going to be a life-changing experience for those of you who snore or who have sleep apnea. So let's go and surprise uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Radvar. By the way, this is his car. Look. He is so dedicated to his uh, to his profession. Here you go. It's like Dr. Snore. He is so good at it. That's one of his cars. It's gonna be a surprise. It's lunch time. Dr. Dar, where are you, man? <laughs> Great to see you. This man literally has saved my marriage and saved my relationship with my children, uh, with my snoring problem. So, that's Doc. it, just the snoring problem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, today, uh, what we want to do is. We like to talk about this life-changing experience. It is a, it's an amazing, amazing life-changing experience that with, uh, I would say, so little, you can literally change somebody's life and improve somebody's life so much. I am so excited about this that I want to share it with the whole world. I, you know, these are, this, is a, this is not, to me, it's not just a dental, another dental procedure. It's literally a you know, life-saving uh, procedure and it's a life-saving device and I'm so lucky that I came across Dr. Dar and uh, you know this thing has to be done just right it's not brain surgery but it has to be done right and this man knows how to do it right better than anybody else and I just cannot thank him enough that it's just the quality of my life is so much better um, I, you know, not only I've started losing weight because I'm getting the oxygen that I need. Um, I, you know, literally I had my, I, my bedroom was separated very politely. Uh, I mean, and, and, and I was sleeping in a different room because I was snoring and I didn't want to wake my wife up throughout the night. And even when I would go camping, you know, with our RV, it was horrible because my daughter would come and wake me up and said, Dad, you're snoring. Can you knock it off? And it's like, how do you knock it off? I would tur toss and turn, sleep on my side, do different things. And not only my family was not getting good night's sleep, I wasn't getting good night's sleep. And, you know, a lot of people look at dentists and they say, like, they're not real doctors. Or they look at dentistry and they say, like, it's just an elective thing. But you know what? When they say 75% of diseases start in the mouth, I think another 10% of it is really related to this sleep apnea thing. And, you know, dentistry is really important. And not only when the, the device that I'm, I'm wearing at night, uh, you know, and we'll show it to you, it's just exciting. Not only that device is giving me more oxygen, I have more energy, I sleep better at so many levels has been a life-changing experience and I'm so excited about this that I really want, like I said, I want the whole world to know about it. Uh, and like I said, a lot of physicians, they don't put two and two together. I have been going to physicians for last at least 10 years and I tell them I have, you know, I go to restroom frequently. At, at night, I get up six, sometimes seven times in the middle of the night. And I go to the restroom and they say, oh, you know what, let's check your prostate. And they give me the digital thing and, you know, they poke me around and, and at the end, oh, your prostate is okay. So it's like, then what's happening to me? Oh, you're just getting old. And it's like, I'm not that old. It, it doesn't make any sense. And lo and behold, <laughs> since I've been wearing this device, I kid you not, I only wake up one time in the middle of the night and that's it 
And now I'm realizing what I was missing. Now I'm realizing, you know, I thought I was sleeping well. I have a clear conscience, very clear conscience. I, I, I have a rule that I always treat people the way I want to be treated. So I sleep really well with a good conscience. But the part that I was missing was the frequent urination that I would get up in the middle of the night and I really thought I was having some uh, urology problem. And it wasn't a urology problem. It was a problem that was solved by my good friend, Dr. Radfar. And Dr. Dar is just an amazing guy and I, I just can, cannot hardly wait for you to listen to this man. And you know, whether you're listening to this video, you are a patient, take this serious. And if you are a dentist, take this very serious because unfortunately in a dental school doc, they didn't teach us much about this. It, they, they taught us about filling and drilling and crown and bridge and implants and this and that. But this was, this has been seriously overlooked. So if you are a dental provider, you need to listen to me. I'm your colleague. I'm, your, I'm a dentist just like you. And I'm not making this, making this up. It's like, you gotta try this. You gotta, you gotta listen to Dr. Dar and let him guide you in how easy it is. You know, I have this experience with, with, with all these different professionals that they look in their toolbox. They see whatever is in the toolbox, then they, they just try to use that what, whatever is in the toolbox. If they have a special wrench that fits that, 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 that socket, they use that. If they don't have that wrench, they just look the other way. Well, healthcare professionals out there, dentists out there, you are responsible. And if your patients are coming to your office and they're snoring and they're not getting, they, they have sleep apnea, ethically and legally, it's your responsibility to offer this to them. And you know what? Once today, we are going to make this so simple, not just for the patients, but also for the healthcare providers, you know, for the dentists. We are going to make this so easy that you see how simple and how easy you can change somebody's life. And you know what? It's okay. You're a dentist. You don't work for free. Everybody should get paid for what they do. You're also gonna, going to make some money doing that. Nobody expects you to do this for free. But you have to touch people's lives. This is so important. Quality, my quality of life is so much better. I, I've always had so much energy. And my energy is quadrupled. And I, 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 of, which is a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of energy. Before. I mean, I drive everybody nuts <laughs> around me. And you know what? It's all right. That's my energy. And I put it to good use. So I would like, you know, to get into the upper tree with Dr. Uh, Dar. And, you know, we surprised him. They said, we called, they said it's, it's, it's lunchtime and the staff are out. They said, okay, staff are out. You we're going to go in there. You always surprise me. <laughs> and we're going to go in there and surprise Dr. Dar. And I just cannot tell you how excited I'm, I am about this. I mean, this is, this is one of the things because it has really had an amazing impact on my personal life. And, uh, you know, I just cannot hardly wait to share this with you and show you how easy it is. Dr. Dar, let's go to the operatory and let's I wanted go. to talk to everybody about this. All right, let's go. Go ahead, brother. So, welcome, Dr. G. A uh, good friend of mine, um, I'm Dr. Dar Radfar. I've been doing sleep apnea treatment for over 10 years now. Uh, I've been a dentist for 19 years. I got into it uh, helping patients like Dr. G uh, because I crashed my car into a tree, uh, fell asleep at the wheel 10 years ago, realized that I had a problem. Luckily, uh, I survived, obviously, nothing, no scratches on me, and um, figured out after a home sleep test that I actually have uh, mild sleep apnea. They uh, wanted to give me a CPAP machine, the oxygen mask, uh, to wear every night. I couldn't wear it. I'm a stomach sleeper. I sleep on my side. I toss and turn. And so um, I ended up figuring out that there's a mouthpiece. Now, a mouthpiece only dentists can provide. A medical doctor can't provide or do a oral appliance for the treatment of snoring and sleep apnea. And so when we ended up uh, talking to Dr. G, I asked them, how many of the different uh, conditions does he have that indicate that he can have sleep apnea? He 
He's a very energetic guy, super positive. I told him he can become even more than that. I'm gonna make him Superman, more than he already is. Uh, the sleep that he has, uh, it gets interrupted uh, because of his lack of getting oxygen in when the tongue falls back and hits the back of the throat or the roof of the mouth called the soft palate. Um, it can cause vibration and that vibration is called snoring. Uh, when you have that kind of an effect on the body, the body feels like it's frightened, it's gasping for air. And that fight or flight response naturally produces more urine uh, that leads to, for some patients, exactly. frequent nighttime urination, correct? Yes, correct? exactly. So it's, it's a way of the body excreting uh, it's uh, it's a byproduct to be able to run fast away from the lion when you're having that frightened breathing. And so that's one of the indications, nighttime urination. Snoring is obviously another indication. Being more tired throughout the day, something called daytime sleepiness is also a big one where you just that's wake true. up and you're not that's as true. rested. Yeah. I was like, there were times that I would wake up in the morning and uh, I would feel that I'm, I'm a little tired. Yeah, and that's because your heart's racing faster to get oxygen to your brain when you're not getting enough oxygen. And so it likes you're doing like these mini marathons. And so when you don't get into deep sleep because you have obstruction of breathing and you keep coming into a lighter sleep, you're not producing a few th hormones. Some of them are, one of them's growth hormone, one of them's leptin. Leptin is if you and I could bottle leptin and sell it, we'd be uh, we'd be retired in in a matter of a day. It, is it the same one that's in the leptin teas or no? <laughs> leptin uh, <laughs> Leptin uh, um, helps you increase your metabolism at rest, oh. and so uh, you're efficiently burning more calories at rest. So therefore, it helps you lose weight. Uh, the I have I have lost some weight, yeah. and you know I, I I thought that I had I thought I had thyroid problem. Yeah, actually, when I when you came in today, I saw you. I wanted to say you look, you look I, I, good. <laughs> I like to eat, by the way. Yeah. I, I love I love food. It's well, my it's my hobby. Food. It's, it's my hobby. But you know what? It just was like I kept going to the doctor and said, "Can you check my thyroid hormones?" Yeah. Your thyroid hormones are good. I said, like, then why am I not burning fat? Right. And it was like, well, voila. Leptin, here it is. leptin also helps you eat less at a given meal. When you're eating and you're constantly eating past the point of full, leptin is a hormone that tells you, right, hey, stop eating. There's a communication that I'm full. I don't need any more food. Um, it also helps eat less in be, in be, uh, frequently. So uh, in between meals, you don't get as hungry. It curbs your hunger. So leptin is produced in the deep stage of sleep. If you have a that kind of obstruction, you go back to the light doze, I call it church sleep or in the car kind of sleep, and then you're not getting uh, into that depth sleep where there's rapid eye movement, REM type of sleep where that leptin or growth hormone is produced. This actually has an effect on kids as well. Kids should not be snoring whatsoever. That is a no-no. Anyone under the age of 12 should not be snoring. If they do, a pediatric ENT needs to evaluate their adenoids and their tonsils. My son at the age of two and a half, we put him through uh, surgery because he was snoring. He was at the 30th percentile in growth while his sister was at the 90th. Uh, and they're only 20 months apart. And after the surgery, literally within six months, he bumped up to 70th percentile in growth. So it helps a slew of effects on, on your child, uh, their mood, their attitude, and more importantly, their growth. So if you hear your child snoring, um, and these are patients I see all the time. You know, they're, they come here every six months. Uh, it's not just about two bite wings, two PAs, exam, profi, fluoride, no cavities, good job, Johnny, go home. The, this is a real, really big deal that we're, we're talking about. And, you can kind of see it in, in some of the pedo. The pedo kids have a little bit more tartar on the lower front teeth. They have cross bites. Um, and of course, you know, if you see something like that, ask the parents, does your child snore? And if it's, they say yes, we don't do anything in dentistry, but at least uh, refer them to a local pediatric ENT to evaluate their airway, uh, make sure they don't need their adenoids or tonsils removed. When it comes to adults. Doc, do you think I'm gonna grow a little bit more or am I done? <laughs> you're, you, you're already. You're definitely going to grow in, in, uh, in different ways. <laughs> um, so when it comes to adults, adults have a, a, f a few things that we discussed. Waking up a lot in the middle of the night to go to the restroom, snoring, feeling more tired throughout the day. But there's also some non-social things that are happening that are medical. High blood pressure. 30% of high blood pressure patients is a direct result of sleep apnea. So we fix, true. we help I, I, the breathing. Wow, I just uh, learned something new. Sorry, I'm, I'm just excited about this. I mean, my, 
my I had a bit of a hypertension, mm -hmm. and now my blood pressure is more normal. Yeah, yes, yeah, so and, and and I thought maybe it's because of yeah. I'm getting better, good looking or something. Yeah. Right, but I guess it's not. It's, it's because you're a lot of device. Of, oh, it's, <laughs> it's because your wife's more happy. That's why your your blood pressure is not as high anymore. <laughs> Um, so that's one of the major indications is high blood pressure. Diabetes type 2, 48% of diabetic patients type 2 is a result of sleep apnea. That's almost half. Acid reflux, something we call GERD. 60% of GERD patients is a result of sleep apnea. When you're struggling for air, the diaphragm pushes against the stomach, the acid comes up repeatedly leads to more frequent heartburn throughout the day. So patients who have heartburn Very have true. a high likelihood that they have sleep apnea uh, because that esophageal sphincter gets destroyed throughout the night. Very true. And I have not had any heartburn. Yeah, since, I'm, since I'm having this device, yeah. not even a single time, have not had like a acid reflux and heartburn. And that's what I hear from my patients is um, the improvement on these things, on these conditions. These are medical conditions. Uh, the, the real serious stuff that most medical doctors I wish would push is and, and discuss, especially cardiologists, is the 23 times risk of heart attack, the 10.3 years off your life if you're not being treated, the five times higher risk of cancer if you're not treated. The body goes through a slew of um, uh, cortisol release when you're not breathing well. That, that frightened fi flight or f uh, fight response is not a very good uh, uh, reaction in the body it causes a lot of toxic environments so, such as uh, the heart beating faster to get oxygen to the brain such as cortisol being released which increases the rates of cancer so we can look at a patient's medical history we don't even have to look at a patient's mouth and if they have these medical conditions already high blood pressure history of cancer uh, diabetes type 2 acid reflux um, these uh, <laughs> obesity is sometimes you know something that you can you know they probably don't write in the medical history but definitely if you look at the patient don't always judge a book by its cover I mean I've been blessed I you know I'm not obese uh, on the holidays maybe I am but that's pretty much it but I have sleep apnea and I, and ten years ago I was smaller than this so uh, it does you don't necessarily have to be overweight to uh, snore and have apnea. It has a lot to do with the anatomy of your jaw. So medical history we could look at, and then ask the patient, hey, you know, how do you mm -hmm. sleep at night? Uh, anyone tell you that you snore? Do you feel get up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom? Uh, do you dream at all? Because dream lack of dreaming means you don't get into that rapid eye movement growth hormone stage. Now not all these have to be true for it to have sleep apnea. They can just have one thing, which is frequent nighttime urination, but they dream very. Uh, at least one or two dreams a night. It still means that they could have a mild um, apnea. So then the rest is we can also look in the mouth as dentists, practitioners, and even people at home. Um, when you look at the mouth, uh, there's few things that patients that have sleep apnea that are suffering from it show. I call it CSI dentistry, crime scene investigation dentistry. So when you look in the mouth, we look at cavities, we look at your gums, we see how healthy you are. We can also see the relationship of the tongue compared to the width of the tongue compared to the size of the jaw. And if the tongue is, does not have a place to sit because the jaw is really narrow, because you have a crossbite um, or just a narrow face, the tongue will, uh, throughout the night as you get these apneotic events, pressed forward against the teeth, kind of like you're doing a tongue thrust. Mm -hmm. And that causes striations on the side, we call it scalloping of the side of the tongue. Uh, because it hits the back of the teeth, and the teeth uh, literally get the, the tongue get indentations because of the teeth. So that's something that's pretty obvious for sleep apnea patients is scalloping of the tongue. The other is is grinding of teeth, grinding spe specifically wearing down their lower front teeth. The wearing down of lower front teeth really happens because how is it like my mouth is open, I'm snoring and I'm grinding. Well, when you get that obstruction you get that aggressive, almost like you're fighting someone and the lower front teeth grind against you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, Doc, since I've been wearing this device, I had a few teeth that were painful. Right. One of them even was diagnosed by one of my co-workers, another dentist, that you're going to need a root canal in this tooth because when they tested it, it was so sensitive. And since I've been wearing a device, the symptoms from the tooth are gone. Because you're not and, constantly and grinding or clenching against exactly. these teeth. Exactly. And, and when I would wake up in the morning, I had headaches, headaches mm -hmm. and this TMJ, my TMJ yep. was painful. I get up in the morning, I have 
No pain. Yeah. The appliance like, that, that I mean, make you... I, yeah. I'm just telling you, I'm so excited about this. Yeah. This this little it's device, I mean, when we show it to you, you're going to be shocked how simple it looks. This little device has done so much for me, for my loved ones, for my health. Right. It's just, all the years I have been a dentist. I've been a dentist for 22 years. I have never been excited about a single dental procedure as much as I'm excited about this sleep apnea snoring device. As a matter of fact, Doc, guess what? Our cameraman right there, one of our cameramen, he needs it. Right. He's snoring. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna get we're gonna get him help. Sure. We'll we're, gonna, help. we're gonna fix him up. Yeah, it's it's amazing. My my um, about seventy percent of patients are ma male patients, thirty percent are female. But uh, it, it's it's I have a lot of patients who actually are divorced uh, <laughs> Uh, individuals because they're embarrassed about having a new relationship mm -hmm. uh, where their wife or husband before would tolerate the snoring or they would sleep in separate rooms in a new relationship that's really not the best way to start a relationship my room so there's a definite my, my um, room was I, I, I politely myself I had excused myself and I was sleeping in the guest room and the excuse I was using is because we have a young daughter and the daughter wanted to sleep next to the mom and I was using the excuse, oh, you know what? Our daughter really wants to sleep next to you. All these crazy psychologists, they said, don't let the kids sleep next to mom, separate them. I said, no, let the kid enjoy. And uh, that was kind of, I was trying to be nice to her, keeping my snoring to myself. And since I have this device, I have my place next to my wife and it's, and my, my kids are, are, are sleeping better too because their bedroom is not too far from our bedroom. and. And my daughter would sometimes wake up from my snoring. So it's, it's amazing. So uh, to, change. To, to get started with uh, Dr. G, after asking him some questions about his medical history, how tired he is throughout the day, all that, and then also looking at his mouth, seeing some striations in the scalloping in the tongue and the wearing of the lower front teeth, uh, we need a sleep test. And then the good news is now you don't have to go to a lab anymore to have that sleep test done. The initial sleep test for obstructive sleep apnea can be done at home. The company that I use uh, from the sleep apnea team, uh, I referred him uh, to that company. They call the patient. They'll call any of your patients. Go over the um, instructions on, okay, Dr. Radfar has recommended a sleep study. Uh, is this your address? We're verifying your medical insurance. It is a medical condition. Therefore, it is under medical insurance for, um, for the study. And, and then, the device was very comfortable, yeah. Doc. And then they send it to you in yeah. the mail. Um, they very, send it to you in the mail, uh, and you wear it for a couple nights for accuracy purposes. Sometimes we do three nights, uh, depending on the on the on the request to the to from the doctor to get a little bit more of a, an average result. And then when he's done with the sleep study, you put it back in the box. It already has a stamp. Goes back to the sleep apnea team, and and a board certified sleep physician scores the results just like you went overnight to sleep in the lab and he came he or she came in the next day and and, and looked at your results then they sent me the results so uh, after talking to dr g uh, about his symptoms and the snoring that he had and the frequent nighttime urination and uh, being a little bit more tired throughout the day the acid reflux we said let's go ahead and do a sleep study now uh, the sleep study that was done um, is a home sleep test uh, and he was able to do it at home, sent to his house uh, through the company that I re refer to. Um, and that company has a board certified sleep physician that um, scores the results and sends the dentist the results. Because as dentists, we're allowed to screen, we're allowed to uh, talk to the patient, look in the mouth, look for those signs of uh, uh, tongue half scalloping, grinding with the lower front teeth. Uh, something we also call malampati 4, which is the soft palate is droops really far down where you can't really see the airway when the patient's sitting up, when they stick their tongue out. Um, and so these types of indications, um, we ended up doing that home sleep test. The home sleep test came back for uh, Dr. G as mild to moderate sleep apnea. Now patients who have severe sleep apnea, well, those are the ones that stop breathing 30 or more times an hour. Uh, really should be on a CPAP machine. A CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure, is an oxygen mask machine that blows air down your throat to get the air there. Um, mild to moderate patients were in a really good place as dentists to be able to treat these patients with an oral appliance. 
They can, of course, still try to do a CPAP machine, but oral appliances are very effective for patients under 30 times that they stop breathing. Uh, Dr. G's was 10 times an hour. Uh, and a, just a quick little synopsis, 5 to 15 times an hour is mild, so he's mild. 15 to 30 is moderate, and anything above 30 is severe. So he's a mild patient. Uh, I also, actually, we have more in common than we thought. Mine was also 10 times an hour when I did my sleep study. We both are 10s, man. We're both 10s. You, ten just ha you just happen to be... You just, ha out of 100, you, just, you just happen to be better looking. <laughs> um, so... Um, we made him an oral appliance. We took impressions, upper and lower impression, and a bite impression. And uh, what he's been raving about is the same appliance I've been wearing for almost 10 years. I've made over 3,000 of these now over the last 10 years. I've taught this uh, all over the world, including Mexico City and Vietnam. I'm, I take pride in my courses that I teach now. Some of them are, most of the courses are on Zoom. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, I love teaching this because I know it works and it's a game changer for the patient once they start wearing it and getting used to it. And I, so the way I usually start uh, my, the way I usually start with the patient when the appliance comes in, I have them try it in uh, right away. Uh, there's an upper and lower component. Uh, the upper is bigger than the lower one. So I have them kind of um, hold on to it, play with it a little bit. Um, and I want them to try putting it in without using a mirror uh, because I want them to put it in right mm -hmm. before bedtime. Patients tend to put this in the, in the bathroom, then they go in bed and they sit, sleep on the bed and they watch TV and they get on their phone and talk to their wife or husband and they struggle with it. The best time to put this in is right before lights out, right before you fall asleep. So take it with you from the bathroom to your nightstand. Leave it there and then put it in right before you turn your lights off or plug your phone in for that's for exact, charging. That's exactly what I do. So you can pass out if you're so as close to sleep as possible. So Dr. G is already kind of a, a pro at this. I, I, I just love this. You know, years back, uh, you know, one of my partners uh, did a device on me. And this device was basically locked like upper and lower lower jaw they were locked and it brought my lower jaw forward a little bit but it, that thing was locked and i couldn't move my jaw at all with this device is how, what's cool about it is that you can actually bring your jaw forward a little bit you can actually open and close a little bit but it doesn't allow the jaw to fall back you see, that's the, that's the greatest thing about this device. So if you have had a device that somebody gave it to you before and it didn't work, it was uncomfortable, you say, I'm done with this. This is crazy. I've been there, done that. Some dentist made me some uh, device for my snoring device or, or sleep apnea device and it just was not working. It really was very uncomfortable. It's true. I've had that device before and it really does not, does not work nearly as well as this. So, and this uh, is a uh, to interject. This is called a sleep herbs appliance. H e r b s t sleep herbs. Most labs that, uh, that provide sleep appliances make this appliance. Um, I use one, uh, the lab in Arizona called Gergen Ortho Lab. That is the lab I've been using for about ten years. Uh, the appliance that you had was the tap appliance that locks you kind of forward and you can't even move left or right. Um, and that actually can induce TMJ issues. This oh, one you're right. Helps. So as, as we are talking about this device is the other device I had that was kind of locked the jaw in a, in a position. I couldn't go sideways. I couldn't bring my jaw forward. I couldn't open my mouth. It was just like kind of uh, like that crazy, the movie was like si Silence of the Lambs. There's like <laughs> there's something on my mouth that I couldn't, you know, it made me like, I'm claustrophobic. It made me claustrophobic and it made me feel really bad. And uh, I was somewhat skeptical, but at the same time, I trust Dr. Dar. And he said, look, let me, let me make you one. You cannot sleep without it. I truly cannot sleep without this anymore. After 10 days I slept with this device, I just cannot sleep without it. And look how simple it is. By the way, what Dr. Dar did, he basically took my upper impression, lower impression, and my bite registration where where jaw is supposed to be, which uh, slightly forward, yeah. about sixty percent forward. Yes, which it would be cool to have that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, taking pictures of the show, exactly how it's done because most people are afraid of doing that. So it's very simple. 
The, the Don't, you should never be afraid of helping a patient. I mean, we take, as dentists, if you're a patient, you may want to close your ears on this. As dentists, we take a needle and we put the needle <laughs> in someone's jaw and you take a drill and permanently drill teeth away. And of course you have experience. There's, you can't really mess this up. Uh, upper lower impression and a slight underbite or 60% protrusive bite registration. Send it to the lab, have them set it. You can always move the appliance back and forth if it's too uncomfortable for them. But really you want to start the patient at about 60% protrusive or 60% forward from their normal bite compared to how far forward they can go. Um, and to be able to start at that position is the lab sends it to you this way. Right away you just have the patient try it in. Um, and then if it's too tight, you could take a, 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 what we call an acrylic burr in dentistry mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, oh, it's putting a lot of pressure on the front tooth. And you kind of adjust the inside so it's not putting as much pressure. The adjustments are super easy. Um, and uh, the retention from this is like a retainer. They have little ball clasps in there yes. for retention. Uh, the teeth have to be in good standing. You can't have any periodontally involved uh, teeth that are loose or moving. Uh, plus three mobility, we call it three millimeters of movement. You can't do it. You can have periodontal type one, type two on a couple of teeth, but um, definitely you have to have teeth that are in good standing. You know, try this them. is this is so light, and it's so comfortable. When I put this in my mouth, I I can and I want you I want you to pay attention to that. I can actually move my jaw a little bit forward even. I can move side to side, and I can even open my mouth a little bit so I can breathe if I wanted to just take a, a, a breath. So look how cool it is. And so all these appliances, each one, and I always check the retention a little bit. I try to make sure that it's not falling down and it's not too easy to take off, just so it doesn't flop around in the mouth sometimes and patients find it on the, you know, next to them in bed or on the ground. And if it is too loose, there's again, there's ball clasps and then you can bend in and can grab t the teeth a little bit more, just like a regular Holly retainer. Um, so he put it in very nicely. Go ahead and take it out for me, Dr. G. Perfect. That's now, simple. That's simple. Uh, easy to clean, toothpaste, five seconds each side. Um, some people like to soak it in uh, Listerine and water. You could do that as well throughout the day if you, or hydrogen peroxide and water. Um, this is the one thing you don't forget to take when you travel or you go to sleep over uh, <laughs> camping, anything like that. You know, you pack your toothbrush and you pack your sleep appliance. Um, he mentioned, mentioned now he's almost addicted to it. Be it. The reason why is it's custom fit. It's different than the stuff you get over the counter. The over the counter stuff is, is not made for every jaw size or tongue space or cheeks and whatnot. So it's a little bit more bulky um, and it, they do work, but they can, can give you a little bit more jaw problems. This is, has the least amount of TMJ issues and the most uh, recommended by any sleep specialist out there that does this. It's not my appliance, no one's trying to sell you a, a certain type of appliance. It's called a Sleep Herbst, H-E-R-B-S-T, um, and it's, it's a lot of different labs make it. Uh, I use the one in Arizona called Gergen Ortho Lab. And so, um, uh, he wears it every night. People say, can I wear it during my nap time? I take naps during the day. Absolutely. One of the major things is, is Dr. G and I once in a while hang out together and we go have a couple drinks, right? So when you have alcohol or you have anything that puts you to sleep today, we're dealing with a lot of stress in our lives, a lot of thoughts, a lot of uh, uh, anxiety and insomnia. And sometimes we take certain supplements such as Tylenol PM, Benadryl. Uh, these types of things uh, can really affect uh, the patient's breathing because the mouth gets a little bit more dry um, and that is the time, alcohol, any, even melatonin, uh, any Ambien, Xanax, uh, anything that patients are using to help calm the mind and anxiety to sleep better, the apnea will get worse, uh, including marijuana. So and in California, that's become a little bit more popular now. So always remember to wear your appliance specifically uh, if you're using any of these uh, sedatives, as I call it. Um, because that relaxes the tongue and the face and the jaw and that makes it the obstruction worse. So anytime me and him go, go have a drink, I always remember, remind him, don't forget to wear your appliance no matter how tipsy you get, <laughs> right? Um, have you had any jaw problems with the appliance in your mouth? Zero. So typically if a patient has that, that means you Zero. started a little too far forward. You can bring them back, adjust the appliance, 
about half a millimeter on each side to bring it back. That'll relieve it. Um, and they get on some maybe ibuprofen or anti-inflammatory for, for a few nights and that relieves the discomfort. Sometimes I tell them don't wear it for a week until the discomfort's gone and then try it again. It's like, like any new exercise program. Uh, you know, you're putting a 10 pound dumbbells in there, they may be a little too much for some people and for mm -hmm. some others it's not. So, and if the patient's still snoring, they're not feeling that much benefit at 60% forward, you can bring them up to 70%. So we can, that uh, mouthpiece is adjustable to bring it forward or back. Um, and we've done one time for him where we brought it a little bit more forward because he wanted to make sure that even when he's drinking alcohol, he's not snoring as much. Snoring doesn't always mean you have I don't drink. Meal. I don't drink, by the way. You don't drink. <laughs> I'm a boring guy. You always get the virgin <laughs> one when you and I are out. Um, so uh, yeah, the appliance is adjustable in case he takes some medication or anything like that uh, on a regular basis. That We need to make sure his airway is open. Okay. It's been amazing. I, it's just, I cannot... Thank you enough. Of course. I cannot uh, be excited enough about this, this device. And like I said, it's just a very, very simple device. And for the dentist, don't be afraid. Just because you have not made this before, if you don't know how to do it, just send your patient to us. We are not going to take your patient for the rest of their work. We promise you. We take care of their sleep apnea. We send it back to you respectfully. But, you know, even if you look at it economically, you know, you want to have live patients. It doesn't do good for anybody if your patient passes away because they had sleep apnea problem. And you know what? It should. It, it will be on your conscious. Uh, you know, and, and I'm sure you all have consciences. Well, one so of the one of the big things, Doctor G, that I have from the experience that I have with the patients, is once I help them sleep better, whether it's the sociological, environmental, of the snoring next to a bed partner or whether it's the medical benefits, such as they're off of high blood pressure medication or they don't get reflux as much anymore. All these build a certain credibility with your patient that the next time Dr. G is in and I go, you need a crown on number 30, the lower right molar, the value that you brought to that patient's life and well-being, the trust that you built because you've changed so many aspects of their life, whether medical or sociological or emotional even, uh, they're more willing to trust any type of dentistry that you tell them that they need. Uh, they're more willing to refer patients to you. Most of my patients are not because of advertising. It's more to mouth referral. Uh, UPS sent 14 patients to me because one driver fell asleep at the wheel um, and I made him a mouthpiece. He feels great. He told all the other drivers and I got 14 patients within a matter of three months coming in here. And by the way, UPS has very good medical insurance. So medical insurance, PPO, for yeah. the most part, will cover these appliances as long as you have a valid sleep study, which is uh, done uh, with a home sleep test. By the way, I wanted to share this with you, that um, uh, whenever I would take a long drive, mm -hmm. I would fall asleep and I would have to stop and uh, take a break. And, you know, it, it doesn't happen to me as frequently anymore. Luckily, like you're not a truck driver. Uh, that's the, those are the number one patients that I kind of, because remember, I got into this because I fell asleep at the wheel and crashed my car into a tree. Luckily, not another person or another car. And so, really, the patients that are, uh, should be concerned if you're a patient, you're listening to this, or you're a dentist, are patients who actually, people who actually drive a vehicle, whether it's a truck, a bus, uh, UPS, FedEx, doesn't matter. Uh, they really, really need to be make sure they're evaluated for sleep. You look in their mouth, you look at their medical history, you see something that alerts you, just one thing that alerts you like, uh, hey, you know, how do you sleep at night? Do you, uh, has anyone told you that you snore? Do you gasp for air? Uh, do you feel refreshed when you wake up in the morning? How many times do you get up to go to the restroom? These are all introductory questions uh, whichever ones you feel comfortable with, to talk to the patient once you see the comorbidities or medical conditions that we discussed uh, th that the patient may have. And also if you look at the mouth and you see the tongue or the back of the throat, uh, the soft palate being droopy or they, you see the teeth worn down in the lower front, open your mouth. You have a duty, not only because you took an oath to take care of the uh, gums, teeth, alveolar process and the jaw in relationship to any study, that's a part of the Dental Practice Act, uh, but also because you care. I mean, these people are, are relying, unfortunately, the medical doctors, even the cardiologists, give them high blood pressure medication. They have arrhythmias. They exactly. don't send them for a sleep test. You know, it's funny. It's I, sad, actually. You know, I have an 8-year-old daughter and a 13-year-old daughter. 
and it's really funny they were watching TV and they said dad look at all these medications they on TV they talk about all these medications you know like especially like medications for depression and then it says by the way this medication may cause depression it's like what the hell you know you're by the way uh, <laughs> depression is one of the other uh, depression is one of the other big um, things that we see improvement on when you get quality of sleep with this appliance uh, I've had patients on Prozac uh, and certain other antidepressants tell me that they've been weaning off their medication uh, and also their anxiety is, is less so um, for this I mean it, it sounds too good to be true uh, but it's not. It really is what it is. It's helping so many different medical conditions. It's very true. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and it's not a pill that you have to take. It's something that you should try if the CPAP doesn't work for you or you don't like your CPAP. Even the severe patients I've helped. I had a guy 110 times an hour. He had three car accidents. He couldn't wear the mask. I made him a mouthpiece. I brought him down to 42 times an hour. He thinks I'm walking on water. Uh, because, but it's still severe, but way yes. better than what he was before. It's better than nothing. Um, and surgery is not the most um, uh, uh, promising type of uh, treatment. Uh, doing what we call a rotor rooter of your yes. throat is about 50% effective. There is another surgery by Inspire. They put a little hypoglossal nerve stimulation, which is its tongue, where the uh, there's an electrical signal. It almost looks like a little remote control that you tape on your chest. Where the I call it a tongue pacemaker, mm -hmm. uh, and it stimulates the tongue in the middle of the night to to slightly thrust forward every time there's an apnea event. Um, that surgery is it's kind of costly. It's about twenty thousand dollars for the surgery. It works almost for entirely for all patients. The only side effects we've been seeing the constant stimulation of the tongue. Uh, has made the tongue a little bit more uh, bigger <laughs> and so people are biting their tongue more and um, and so th th that's a new surgery that came out a couple this, years ago. I just cannot reiterate on those all these chemicals that people go to physicians and they say that look, look their blood glucose is up here's a pill for blood glucose your blood pressure is up here's another pill you know you, you this you know everything this is up this is up or this is down and just keep giving you prescription 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 and most of those things you have to find out why it's like that what is the reason and by the way doc i would love to have uh mo our, our cameraman we like to get a study done on him yeah, that's what but, but today first. today would be great to take impressions on him mm -hmm. and and show how the impressions are, are taken uh, to all of our doctors to see this procedure again is not brain surgery it's very simple all you have to do is you will see dr dar is, an, is a master in, in this thing take an upper impression lower impression and take the bite registration send it to laboratory i don't take the impressions my <laughs> staff does so that's how easy it is <laughs> that any staff member who can take alginate impressions can take pbs impressions we also have a scanner to an intraoral scanner that you can, if you have a scanner, they accept the labs to accept that. The impression part is actually the easiest part. The biggest, most important part is the value that you have that you talk to the patient on how this can help them and try to get them through the hurdle of getting a sleep study because you do need a sleep study to properly treat sleep apnea. Otherwise, all you're doing is making a snore appliance. You don't have a medical diagnosis uh, from a medical doctor from the sleep uh, apnea team, the home sleep testing company, you're not making a sleep appliance and you're treading water that's a little bit hard to tread because you have to really have a diagnosis to treat as opposed to just, oh, you snore, and you don't breathe well, let me make you an appliance to fix you because they could be severe no matter how overweight or underweight they are. Um, and those patients that find out, wow, Dr. G found out that I'm severe apnea. I thought I wasn't that bad. Maybe they will try the CPAP instead of the mouthpiece because they're so severe and ultimately be treated uh, fully as opposed to partially if they're a severe patient. So sleep study is really required to do this. Otherwise, you're just making a snore appliance. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, it, this really has been a life-changing uh, device for me. And I'm, I just, I'm, I, I cannot say enough. I'm, I'm excited. I every night when I want to go to bed is like I look forward to you know wearing this device and uh, I'm so used to it I just cannot sleep without it and uh, 
Anyway. I also, <laughs> uh, for the people who are watching this, I offer, um, you know, seminars for this on how to do this. Yes. Uh, the seminars that I offer, I used to charge. Now I actually offer it for free. Uh, it's my passion to help other colleagues uh, to figure out how to do this and help implement this into their office from a step-by-step -step kind of turnkey way, starting from the paperwork to talking to the patient like we just did, to evaluating their oral cavity um, and their medical history, to making the appliance, to adjusting it and delivering it, and doing a post-stop sleep study with the appliance in the mouth to making sure that we've got uh, good efficacy. Um, and so uh, I, I have them concurrently, uh, radfarseminars.com is the uh, R-A-D-F-A-R seminars.com is the website. Uh, you'll have, see lists of uh, future ones that I have on Zoom. And then also if you can't make it, I could also send you the recording to the, uh, to, for, for the um, class. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's make uh, some uh, impressions for Mo and uh, uh, you know, also send him for a, for a, for a, st a sleep study. And uh, I got a feeling because his, his brother was telling me that uh, you know you are you're, you have difficulty sleeping, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, you know what are your symptoms? He says he just gasps for air mm. very loudly. So he's the type of patient we definitely need the sleep study because yeah. he may not be the yeah. best candidate for an oral appliance uh -huh. because maybe he has severe apnea. Uh -huh. We don't know that until the sleep study. This is exactly my point. Uh -huh. Is of course I've had patients treated with severe apnea with an oral appliance. I would tell you majority of them still don't want the machine. Unfortunately, the machine is about, and some medical doctors want to kill me when I say this, but this is the true fact from the sleep uh, apnea, uh, from the CPAP companies out there that provide the CPAP, is about 21% compliance. So that means eight out of 10 patients get the machine and go, no, thank you. And it's so out, difficult. Yeah, How can you sleep And two out of 10 keep it and yeah. love it. Yeah. Don't ever take those away from those patients. If they love their CPAP, great. You can make this as an adjunct for travel or camping or something like that. Um, so that's why this, the, the home sleep test, the convenience of the home sleep test, sending it to yeah. his house in his own bed, whatever, you know, pillow, the same exact environment as opposed to a lab, so simple to do. Put it back in the box, send yes. it back to the company, and then we call him with the results and go, this is what you need. You can do the mouthpiece. You can do the CPAP. We can try either one first and see how it works for you. Really easy. All right. Let's take some impressions. Cool. He's going to be special because you don't usually take the impressions. He's going to take impressions. Yeah. Like we'll do it together. No problem. Let's take some impressions of Mo. So Alan, we're, we're going to go ahead and take an impression uh, for the Sleep Herbst appliance. I'm using heavy body um, PVS material. Do not use alginate. Uh, we need something that's a little bit more durable and because they pour up their own models with dicane and whatnot. So. Um, do not use alginate and pour up the model, use PVS material. So I already tried this tray in to make sure it fits. It's the accuracy of the impression is not as needed like when you're doing a crown or an Invisalign or anything like that. We just need to get at least 75% of the teeth if not, um, and the roof of the mouth does not need to be uh, either. You don't need to get the roof of the mouth. So at least 75% of the teeth if not 100%, meaning don't stress out about it. It's just an impression that your staff or yourself as a dentist can do. This is so exciting. I'm so happy for you. You're gonna be starting, you're gonna be starting to sleep good like me. Mm -hmm. Happy for you. Thank you. You know, I was just uh, telling uh, Mosan that uh, in life, whenever you're helping somebody, it will come right back to you. And I want to tell you this, uh, today it was kind of the last minute. I said, look, I have found out that Dr. Dar is having his lunchtime and staff are outside. I want to go and ambush him. <laughs> and they put everything down. These two brothers are so awesome. They put everything down. So, okay, let's go. So here you go. If you would have told me, ah, you know what? We got other things to do. Uh, I'm so busy. He, well, he wouldn't get a chance to meet the great Dr. Dar, <laughs> and, and he wouldn't get the opportunity to get, you know, this uh, device getting, getting this rolling for him. So that's, that's the, another life lesson I want you to get out of this is that whenever you help, it comes right back to you immediately. And don't always expect it. Don't expect it, but it happens. Most of the time it happens right away, 
But the rest of the time it doesn't happen, it will eventually happen in, in this very world. So thank you for being available today. And uh, yeah, and you know what? This is the best time that I have Mo in the chair right now. I can just talk. He has to listen. He, he cannot even respond. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Show, 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 it, show it to the, that close-up camera, doctor, right there. So again, so just it, need it. Okay, good. Beautiful. 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 You excited? Yes. <laughs> excited. This is so exciting because I have done it before. I sleep so well and this young man is not sleeping well. Uh, maybe you charge me too much for the projects. That's why you don't sleep well at night. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. Actually, they are very nice and generous to us, and and this is a, a great relationship. So, but you know, I'm excited to be able to help him. Hopefully, he gets the same result that I have from this device, and uh, we're gonna get his sleep study done to uh, send it out. Uh, we kind of are doing putting the horse before the carriage. We're taking the impressions and all that. Because he's course, here. He's here. Exactly. <laughs> It doesn't hurt. It doesn't and you know, that's sometimes that's I actually do that. I take the impression or the scan for the patient, especially if it's a scan, and, and, and hold it. You know, these impressions are good for about six months. If you have a scanner, it's good for until the, the patient's teeth move or change or whatnot. So um, just to kind of get them started, they feel like, wow, I'm already getting, you know, some sort of help with this. And now I just need to do a home sleep test to kind of uh, seal it, right? becomes a, a vicious cycle when you uh, gain weight and you cannot sleep well at night then you gain more weight and more weight and more weight but when you get your oxygen then it goes the other way around you start losing weight and it becomes it's a vicious cycle because when you gain a lot of weight all of these tissues right here they Compress. make more more fatty tissue and it obstructs the airway even more so it's <laughs> it's, it's horrible it's just like the poor become poorer the rich become richer type concept in this situation, somebody who is having weight issues, they just gain more weight and it just makes the situation worse and worse and worse and God forbid, gets to a point of uh, sudden death. So uh, it's just, uh, it's exciting. There's a lot of uh, John Candy, uh, Reggie White, football player, um, they were all um, severe sleep apnea patients. Junior Seau, uh, San Diego Chargers, very famous linebacker, he committed suicide. He was on nine different sleep medications and wow. whatnot. Uh, poor sleep can really affect, uh, but the problem is, is sometimes it's hidden. If you don't have a bed partner, um, if you don't know if, uh, if uh, you're having any sort of uh, symptoms that are really obvious, but I mean, he knows that his symptoms, he's, he feels like he probably gets dry mouth. You know, most people, that's one of the easiest ones when you get dry mm -hmm. mouth in the middle of the night. So. That's a beautiful impression. Okay. So um, there's an actually there's an app uh, called Snore Lab. Again, none of these things I own. I just use uh, S N O R E L A B Lab. It's you can get down, download it on Android or iPhone. And so this Snore Lab uh, app, what it does is it, if you don't have a bed partner or you really want to truly know how badly you snore, it actually records your snoring and picks up the snoring sound and gives you a snoring index. When a patient hears that themselves before a sleep study or anything like that, um, I recommend, hey, you know, if you feel like you're more tired throughout the day, someone has told you you're snoring, download this app and then get, let me know. Give me a call if you want to talk to me um, so I can then maybe refer you for the sleep test. Listen to yourself sleep. Um, and <laughs> sometimes it'll scare people how much they, uh, they hear the obstruction or the loudness or how loud the snoring is. Okay, it's a cool app to download called Snore Lab. Awesome, awesome.
So they're going to do a bike registration now, huh? Oh. This one is a cool one. I, you know, this is the part that uh, you have to pay attention because uh, you have to put the jaw in the position that you would like the device to be made. Start it, yeah. You start the device on that position. So I use a um, rapid bite registration material. It takes about 45 seconds or so, 30 to 45 seconds for it to set. Um, you don't want to use the ones that are for two minutes set time. So there's different ways of taking the bite. I remember I taught my assistants how to do this, so I really, really want to make it easy, right? So I'm going to have him go ahead and bite down and kind of bite on this. Okay, good. Perfect. And I want to kind of have the Q-tip almost touching his nose. That's a perfect place to put his bite. So that's perfect right there. That's, that's, that's where he wants it. That's exactly where I want it. And so right then and there, I kind of... Mm -hmm. Squirt the material here. And you have them hold it just like that. Perfect. Keep that only for just another 30 seconds. You're doing great. That is cool. Dentists get excited about the craziest stuff, but you know what? This is not crazy. This is so awesome. And it's just, uh, I cannot say enough about my personal experience, and I'm so excited that... Don't open just yet. What's that going to happen? Okay, buddy. Go ahead and open for me, boss. Open. Perfect. Is that registration and not doc? Yeah. Perfect. And this gets sent to Gergen Ortho Lab. Uh, and Gergen Ortho Lab pours the models, oh, puts no. the teeth there, and boom. Again, guys, it's not rocket science. It's you, you're off a millimeter or two millimeters here or there. You can adjust the appliance back and forth if it's too far forward when you did it, or it's not enough forward. Uh, it all depends on how the patient's feeling when they put it in their mouth, okay? And then they sleep with it for about a week. When they deliver the appliance, I have them come back after a week. I ask them what their bed partner says. How do you feel? Do you feel less tired throughout the day? Um, how many times did you get up to the rest, go to the restroom? Did that decrease? Um, uh, if they don't have a bed partner, I have them download that app called the Snore Lab to see if it, the snoring has gotten less. Those are all indications that it's working. If it's not working, we advance the appliance about a millimeter forward, um, and so, which we've done for Dr. G. Um, so he wanted a little bit more. He says he still snores a little bit, um, and especially when he's super tired or whatnot. So we can, we got his airway a little bit more open. If we've pushed them too far, they're going to get jaw problems. So you're going to bring them back about half a millimeter. And that's something that on my seminars, for example, at radfarseminars.com, I, I teach that. Even on the Zoom, it's, I show it. I kind of zoom in on the Zoom. And I show how to adjust the appliance. It's really easy to do. Um, good. Awesome. Good so, so bottom line, Dr. D is not just a good-looking guy. <laughs> He's an amazing clinician. And I've learned you, so sir. much from him. And we are looking forward to spread the good word everywhere in the world that we save more lives, we bring more quality of life to people, and we bring more smiles to people's lives. That smile is so, it's not just a cosmetic thing, that smile of somebody having a better quality life and the loved ones around them having a better quality life. That's just priceless. It's absolutely priceless. Thank you, Doc. Thank you for listening in today. Thank you.